نحمد هو نسلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعض فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا آباكم وإخوانكم أولياء إن استحبوا الكفر على الإيمان ومن يتولهم منكم فأولئك هم الظالمون قل إن كان آباؤكم وأبناؤكم وإخوانكم وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين صدق الله العظيم قل Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Muslims, if your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your spouses, wives for the husbands, husbands for the wives, and your relatives, washiratukum, five relations, closest, most dearest, dear. Fathers, sons, brothers, spouses, and now general relations. Three forms of wealth. Vamvalu muha and the riches that you have acquired and gathered. Vatiyaratun tashawna kasadaha and the businesses or the professions about whom you remain fearful of any recessions and your dwellings which you very much like you have built very good houses villas you have decorated them furnished them you love them now uh, if these eight things are more dear to you than min Allah from Allah wa rasulahi and his messenger wa jihad in fi sabihi and making jihad striving for the cause of Allah in the path of Allah to spread the word of Allah to establish the deen of Allah fatarabbasu then you go and wait Till Allah brings forth his decision. Allah is not going to guide such rebellious people. One of the most profound ayat revealed in that special context. People who were not liking, you know, to invade Mecca. But you know, this is a very general ayah. It asks every one of us to have a soul searching, peeping into the depths of our hearts. And let there be a balance, an imaginary, imaginary balance. And you put on one side of the balance, love for eight things, five relations, three forms of riches or belongings or property. On the other side of the balance, you put three loves, the love for Allah, the love for his messenger, and the most crucial, love for jihad. You may say, I love Allah from the depth of my heart. You may think and you may claim that you love Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's the proof? The proof is what jihad in Fisabi. Now see which side of the balance goes down. If these eight things are heavier than those three, go away. You are rejected. Dejected, rejected. If these three are heavier, then glad tidings. 
good news to you. This is for each one of us most crucial. Allama Iqbal in a very beautiful, you know, couplet, he has grouped these things in one sentence. یہ مال و دولت دنیا یہ رشتہ و پیوند بتان وہم و گما لا الہ الا اللہ مال و دولت دنیا تھری تھنگس رشتہ و پیوند فائیو فادرز سنس بردرز پاؤسز ریلیٹیوز رشتہ و پیوند مالت و دولت دنیا اموال اموال الکرف تو موہا و تجارت ان تخشاؤنا کا سادہ و مساکن ترباؤنا کا If the love for these eight is more than the love for Allah and His Messenger and the practical side of it, jihad in the way of Allah. فَتَرَبَّسُوا حَتَّى يَعْفِي اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَعْفِي الْقَوْمُ الْفَاسِقِينَ Now with this ayah ends that section of this surah, these 18 ayat which were revealed before the victory of Makkah to prepare Muslims and to remove from their minds the doubts about it, the hesitation regarding this. Now again, ayat which were revealed in the Qada of 9, along with the first six, now here we start, you can join with them, the first six, the ultimatum, the ayat of the ultimatum. لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَبَاطِنَ كَسِيرَةٍ وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنٍ Oh Muslims, don't fear. That's such a big ultimatum. What comes, what has come, what has happened to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم? They were munafiqeen, all right. They would have thought, you know, again, they have gone crazy. Such a big ultimatum to all the tribes of the Arabian Peninsula. What a big step. All the tribes. I have I had counted three. All the tribes with whom there was no treaty. They will come first. The ultimatum to them was only for 40 days. Then come those with whom there was a treaty but without any specified period of time, four months. Those who had a treaty with a fixed time period, you complete the time. But you know, no tribe of the Arab, Arabian Peninsula left over, challenging all of them. So there must have been some fears in the minds of some people, even the sincere people, even the Mominim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reassuring, don't worry. لَقَدْ نَسَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَبَاتِنَا كَسِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been help you, helping you in many battlefields. وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنٍ And also on the day of Hunayn. Now this Hunayn was after the victory of Bakka. So it proves that these ayat, you know, they are revealed after Hunayn. إِذْ عَجَبَتْكُمْ كَسْرَتُكُمْ when your great number elated you, they were very proud. You were very proud. We are 12,000 today. There was a time when we were only 313 and we were not defeated. Now we are 12,000. The 10,000 who had gone to Mecca and 2,000 more from the people who converted to Islam after the victory of Mecca, or they were still kuffar, but because now they were under Muslims, they volunteered to go with Muslims, to fight for them. So the total number was 12,000, so big number. So they thought, now there's no, no danger. Nothing could save you. And the land despite its vastness, became very narrow for you. Summa valletum ubirin, and then you turned your backs, running away from the battlefield. This happened at Hunayn. Some people say only 30 Sahaba remained with the Prophet 
But you know the more dependable traditions go to about 300. But only 300 out of 12,000. It was a big, you know, flight from the field. Because when they entered a valley, on both sides there were the mountain range. And on the tops there were the archers sitting. And the volleys, you know, arrows came in volleys. Sudden, there was a panic. People fled. Summa under Allah Sakina to Allah Rasuli. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala sent down calm on his messenger. This is the day when the bravery of Muhammad became apparent. And you know, all were running away. He descended from his. Camel or horse, whatever it was, I don't know. He took the alam in his own hand, the standard in his own, and then he said, "Rats, anan nabi yola kazim, anabn abdil muttalib. I am prophet of Allah. There's no doubt about it." Whether these 12,000 stand here and protect me and support me or they all flee, I am the Rasul of Allah. And I am the son of Abdul Muttalib, is here standing in the street. And then he called, Ilayya ya Ma'ashar al Muslimin, Ilayya ya Ashab al Badr, Ilayya ya Ashab al Shajara. Where are you running? Oh, those, those people who were with me at Badr. Oh, those people who were there at the time of the Bayat al Rizwan. Ashab al Shajara. Then people returned. It was actually a reflex action. A sudden, you know, volleys of arrows coming. So this was a very sort of, you know, a reflex action. And then people came round. Summa under Allah Sakhida to Huala Rasuli, Wadal Mominina, Wandala Junudal Lataroha, and he sent down armies whom you couldn't see, the armies of the angels. Wazabal Ladina Kafaru, and he punished and chastised those who had unbelieved. Bazalika Jadaul Kafir, and this is the reward of, the, of those who deny or reject the true faith. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns with his mercy to whomsoever he likes. That is, he gives him the decision he makes to repent. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his repentance. Allah is forgiving and merciful. Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu innama al-mushrikuna najasun. This was also one of the proclamations which were made by Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Mina and Arafah on that, that Hajj. That now from this year on, no mushrik will be able to come here and, and do the pilgrimage. Ya ayyuladzina amanu innamal mushrik ula jasun. Oh, you believe these mushriks who associate equals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are filthy. فَلَا يَقْرَبُ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامَ بَعْدَ عَادِهِمْ هَذَا Now let them, don't let them come near the sacred mosque after this year. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ عَيْلَةً And if you are fearful of poverty, because these pilgrims come, they present something to Kaaba, and they, you know, distribute charity to the people over here, now, if they are barred, you know this, we shall become poor. Fasafa Allahu bin Fazlihi. Very soon Allah will make, will make you rich, rich, will enrich you from His bounty. Insha, if He if He so likes. In Allah Alimun Hakim, Allah is all knowing, all wise. Qatilul Ladina La Yuminuna. Now this is the verdict about the rest of the humanity. Take away the mushrikeen of the Arabian Peninsula only of the time of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. About them, 
there was no third alternative either embrace islam or you will be killed the third was that you flee away from here leave the land but for the rest now here only the jews and the christians are mentioned but this is actually for the whole of the humanity قاتلوا الذين لا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الاخر ولا يحرمون ما حرم الله ورسوله ولا يدينون دين الحق من الذين اوتوا الكتاب حتى يعطوا الجزيه عن يدهم وهم صاغرون fight against those those of the people whom the books book was given before you but they don't actually believe in allah all they do profess to do it they don't have actual belief and faith in the last day wala yuharramuna ma harrama allah they are not accepting as forbidden what allah subhanahu wa taala has declared as forbidden wa rasuluhu and not only allah but also his messenger wala yadinuna din al haqq and they are not obeying the din al haqq and muhammad is sent to make the din of allah supreme they are not ready to accept the supremacy of the deen of allah so you have to fight them hatta yutul jizyata an yadim wa hum sabirun until they pay the tribute the jizya with their own hands that is with willing submission and they become subdued they accept the supremacy of islamic state the supremacy of islamic law and then you know under that they are allowed to live as christians or jews and for that matter as hindus as buddhists or so on whatsoever they are they can live if they accept the supremacy of the islamic state they will not be forced to accept islam not that you will be killed if you don't accept islam this coercion you know in religion like rahafiddin no or on personal basis except those people to whom muhammad was sent directly his birthday khassa that are the exception but keeping them aside for the whole of humanity no compulsion no portion no individual would be forced to accept islam but the system the political socio economic system it will be shattered if you have the force the system will belong to allah qataluhum hatta la ta takuna fitnatun wa yakuna dinu kulluhu lillah but when the deen is supreme under this deen supremacy of allah's deen you can remain as christians as jews as hindus as buddhists you will get you know the guarantee from islamic state of the safety of your lives your property your honor you will be allowed to worship anything in any way you like you will have your full guarantee of the personal law marriages etc as you like law of inheritance as you like your places of worship will also be protected like mosques rather more than the mosques all these things will be guaranteed to you and a tax will be taken from you but you have to accept the supremacy of the islamic state that is crucial because you know in a hadith which i have referred many a times in my lectures on khilafa there is the hadith from miqdad ibn aswad radhiyallahu ta'ala an included in the musnad of imam ahmad ibn hanbal rahimahullah and according to this hadith the prophet said la yabqa ala zahr al ard bait wa bar wa la madar illa adkhalahu allah kalimat al islam بعز عزيز وذل ذليل اما يعزهم الله فيجعلهم من اهلها او يذلهم فيدينون لها the prophet said there will not remain even a single house made of bricks and clay or not for that matter any tent of you know made of blankets from the hair of camel in which allah will not make the kalima of islam enter global domination of islam is 
is to come before the end of this world. No house, no tent on the whole surface of the earth. The settled civilization as well as the nomad, nomadic civilization, all covered. But this kalima of Islam will enter in the house or the tent in either of the two ways. Honoring the honorable one. If the owner of the house and the tent accepts Islam, he is honored. Islam enters in his house or tent, honoring him also. Number two, the weak should have to subdue, accept the supremacy. What does it mean? His house or tent is also governed by the law of the land. Islam has entered in his house also. But he remains, you know, a kafir. He is deprived of the honor of Islam. And then this prophet explained. What does it mean? Is there even? Imma yu'izzuhum. Allah will give them honor. And he will make them the people of that kalima. They will be saying, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Or they will be subdued. The same term, term which is used here. They will have to be subordinate to the deen of Allah. So this is the ayah. Those people who now a few things about these two groups, people of the book. وَقَادَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرُ لِبْنُ اللَّهِ So said the Jews that Uzair, Ezra, is son of Allah. وَقَادَتِ النَّسَارَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ اللَّهِ And the Christian said, Masih, Jesus, is the son of Allah. ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُمْ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ This is their saying, the words that they are uttering with their mouths. These words have no meaning, no real basis. They are imitating the saying of those who were before them from amongst the kuffar. I told you. But you know, let me mention here. Trinity among Christianity came from Egypt. The old ancient Egyptian Trinity was God the Father, Horus as Son of God, Isis as the Godmother. So the Christians imitated them. God the Father, Jesus the Son of God, and Mary the Godmother. That was the real Trinity. They changed it later on. Excluded Mary, Salamun Aleha, and included the Ghost, the Holy Ghost. But the original Trinity was the same. And what happened to the Jews? When they remained in captivity in Iraq for around about 100 years, captivity, Nebuchadnezzar, he invaded Jerusalem and you know he killed about 600,000. And another 600,000 he took captives and took them to Babylonia. During that time in Iraq, the religion of Mithraism, that was popular. And here again, you know, the concept of son of God is present, the Mithraism. So imitated, they imitated Mithraism. They got this, you know, infection from the Iraqi people during their time of captivity. The Christians took it from the Egyptians. They are just imitating the, the, the creed of those who were there from amongst the Kuffar. And I told you the same thing was done by Ismailis in India. When they started preaching in India, Ismailis, they told the Hindus, well, you believe in nine incarnations of God. Just add a tenth one. Ali is the tenth incarnation. 
It's very easy. One believes in nine. What's the difficulty in, in uh, believing in the tenth? Dasham Avatar. Dasham Avatar. He is the tenth incarnation. And just as Paul had abrogated the law, because it was difficult to say prayer, to pay zakah, oh, it's a hard task. No, no, no. Sharia is not for you. The same thing that Paul did. Abrogated Sharia. And that is why, you know, Christianity then spread like anything. You only change your creed and you become a Christian. You only believe in Jesus and all your sins, they are condoned. So it's the, it's the best bargain. Not to do anything. In the same way, the Ismailis, they abrogated Sharia. There's no Sharia for the Ismailis over there. Not for all. <coughs> the Ismailis who, who dwell in the northern regions of Pakistan, <coughs> they have Sharia. They, have the, they are the original Ismailis who came from Iran very long ago. And Multan was one of the biggest centers of them. And Mahmud Ghaznavi invaded Multan many times only to finish these, you know, Batanis who had a very strong hold in Multan. And then they fled to the mountainous regions. And they took refuge over there. That is why they are found in Chitras, they are found in Gilgit, they are found in Hunza. These, you know, areas were not easily approachable on these days. So they went there and they took refuge over there. But these people have Sharia with them. They have mosques. Not the, these people who were converted in Gujarat area and Bombay area and this area, you know. They were converted. They were given the the Rishwa, you know, the bribery, that for you there is no Sharia. You come and believe. And you believe in only that Ali is the tenth incarnation of God. You become an Ismaili, a Muslim Ismaili Muslim. So that is the example for, among, the, among the so called Muslims. They have taken their rabbis and their monks as gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Masih ibn Maryam, and they have taken Masih to be a god. They were not ordained, but to worship only one ilah. La ilaha illahu. There is no God except Him. Subhanahu amma yushrikun. And He is glorified from all that they are associating with Him. Now what does it mean? Ittakhadu ahbarahu wa rubanahu arbabu min dunillah. A doubt might have come to your minds. They don't worship them. And the same doubt was presented by Adi ibn Hatim radhi Allahu ta'ala anhu. The son of the famous, you know, philanthropist, Hatim, Hatim Iqai. His son was a Christian, Adi. When he embraced Islam, once he said to the Prophet, I couldn't understand. Quran says, we, I was a Christian. And we never took them as our God. We never worshipped them. Neither the rabbis nor the monks. The Prophet said, didn't you accept them as the authority in law? Whatever they said is halal, you accepted halal. Whatever they said haram, you accepted haram. Oh, yes, this we were doing. This is actually the divine right that you have given them. Making law is the divine right. Tahleel o tahreem. Declaring to something to be permissible and something to be forbidden. This is divine prerogative. If you have assigned to somebody else, you have made him God. If you have taken it to upon your own self, the popular sovereignty, we can decide. You are claiming to be God. Because this is the exclusive right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must understand this ayah. Ittakhadu ahbarahum wa ruhbanahum arbaabam in dunillahi wal masih abna maryam wa ma umiru illa le yaabudu ilaham wahida. La ilaha illahu subhanahu amma yushlikun.
يريدون ان يطفئوا نور الله بافواهه ويعب الله الا ان يتم نوره ولو كره الكافرون they intend to extinguish the light of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by blowing with their mouths ويعب الله Allah, it is not acceptable to Allah. Allah is not ready to accept, accept. Illa yutim manurah. Accept that he has to make his light complete. Walau karihal kafirun. Although the unbelievers might dislike it. Despite their dislike, Allah has to make the light of guidance complete. Al yawma. اکمل تو لکم دین کم وقت من تو علیہ کم نے امتی و رضی تو لکم اسلام دینا دس از ڈیسیجن محمد از سینٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دی ایڈونٹ آف محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم از ود دس ڈیوائن ڈیسیجن ناؤ ٹو ہوم دس آئی آر ایفرس نمبر ون دی کرسچنس اینڈ دی جیوز Here the mushrikeen are not mentioned. The context is, مِنَ الَّذِينَ هُوتُ الْكِتَابِ اِتَّخَذُوا اَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُوبَانَهُمْ وَرْبَارُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ So you have to explain with reference to the context. And this is the situation which has reached its climax now today. I was reading some leaflet. Some sanctions are coming very soon on Sudan also. encirclement of Iran that is now as fundamental of the foreign policy of the United States of America as was the containment of Russia for so long a period. Pakistan is already in their pocket now. What is happening? يُرِيدُونَ لَيُتْفِعُونُ رَاللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ قَرِهَا الْقَافِرُونَ Trials and tribulations will come to the Muslims, especially the Middle East. Armageddon is at hand. Al-Malhamatul Uzma is going to come very soon. Biggest persecution is going to the Arabs and they deserve it. Because they were given the fazilah. They have the book in their own language. Just like the special case of the pagan Arabs of the peninsula as compared to the rest of the world. The same connection is there. And this is going to come very soon. You know. But after that, there are good tidings of the Prophet ﷺ. Tables will be turned. But this is, you know, the basic thing. يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُطْفِعُ نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَائِهِ You know, this ayah is repeated in Surah Al-Saf. يُرِيدُونَ لَيُطْفِعُ نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَائِهِ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Here, only two words are different. يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُطْفِعُ نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَائِهِ وَيَعْبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا أَن which is the main axis of the whole of the Qur'an according to Shah Wariullah Dehlavi, Rahimahullah. Umud of Qur'an. Huwa alladhi yarsala rasoolahu bilhuda wa deeni al-haqq li yuzhirahu ala al-deeni kullihi wa law kariha al-mushrikoon. This is the key to the understanding of the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his mission? He was not a preacher as well. To bring about that total revolution and make the deen of Allah supreme. He was sent for this definite purpose. And these words are repeated in the Quran thrice. Once here, it's ayah number 33 of Surah Al-Tawbah. Ayah number 9. Surah Al-Saf, the same, exactly the same. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْخُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُزْهِرَهُ وَلَا دِينِ كُلِّهِ In the end of Surah Al-Fatih, 
The major part is the same. هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله. Last but one ayah of Surah Al-Fatih. But the end is وكفى بالله شهيدا. Instead of ولا كره المشركون. So the same words appear in thrice in the Quran. And Shah Waliullah said, and I absolutely agree with him. This is the main theme of the Quran. Allah has sent his messenger وسلم, with two things, the book and number two, Al-Huda, the book, and number two, the Al-Haq, the just politico-socio-economic system, the just social order, the true system of life, and what for he has sent Muhammad, لِيُسْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ so that he makes this deen of Allah supreme. The ayah which we read last night, قَاتِلُوا حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ Although the mushrikun, they will resent it, they will not like it. But it's divine decree, it will happen. It happened once, at the hands of Muhammad in the Arabian Peninsula, then extended to east and west and north, to the Oxus River in the east, to the Atlantic Ocean in the west, to the Caucasian Mountains in the north. But then, you know, there was, there started a downfall. But this will happen again. There is no doubt it will happen. Maybe after the punishments come to us. And the biggest punishment is going to come, as I told you, to the Arabs. Next stand we, the Pakistanis. 10 crores the first and 20 crores of the Arabs. 30 crores go to make one fourth of the total Ummah. And why we? Because we establish a country in the name of Islam. So we deserve, and we have gone back on our words. Collectively, the whole Pakistani nation is culprit. Now, whosoever is more responsible, who is less responsible, it's a different story. But the nation is one. Nobody can say that I don't have any responsibility. بَتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَ We read this ayah last night. Anyhow, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ كَسِيرَ مِنَ الْأَحْبَارِ وَالرُّحْبَانِ لَا يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَيَسُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Another criticism of these people of the book. And please, before reading the ayah, listen from me the hadith. لَيَأْتِيَنَّ you will follow in the footsteps of the former Ummah. The same things will come to you. They have made their Ya Yolajin Amanu in Nakasiram in Allahbar of Rahman and Ya Kuluna Mbal and Nasibil Batil. Many among these rabbis and monks, they are eating and devouring the riches and money and wealth of the people with false means. They have made deen a profession. And when deen becomes profession, it's the worst profession of all. They stop people from the path of Allah. They don't let go. Towards the right dawah. No, no, no. Who is he? He is not an alim. He is not a certificate, certified alim. What was said of Muhammad? He is an illiterate person. Ummi. The same is to be said today. Who is he? We are the authority in deen. Come to us. Don't go. 
and let me quote here another hadith which sends you know shivering yushak wa yati ala nas zaman لا يبقى من الاسلام الا اسمه ولا يبقى من القران الا رسمه i fear that a time will come when there will nothing be left from islam except its name and there will be nothing left from quran except the script masajiduhum amiratun their mosques will be very grand crowded وہی خراب من الہدا ایبسولیٹلی ڈیوائڈ آف گائیڈنس ریچولس می ایم ریچولس واولما ہوم شر النا سے تحت دین السماء اینڈ دیئر علما ول بی دی ورسٹ پیپل انڈر دی کینوپی آف دس اسکائی من عندهم تخرج الفتنة وفيهم تعود from near him will come out fitna and it will return to them starting fitnas will be the only hobby with them this is the ayah this is the hadith the same condition يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن كثيرا من الأحبار والرهبان لا يأكلون أبوال الناس بالباطل these things have come to your country also now taweez is being sold i told for five dollars ten dollars in chicago it's going on now everything has come here all the religious prof- professions they have fully overtaken your society also for some time you know these things were not here but now full full-fledged clergy full-fledged you know all these institutions یا ایو الذین آمنو ان کثیر من الاحبار والرحبان لا یاکلون اموال الناس بالباطل و یسدون عن سبیل اللہ والذین یکنزون الزہب والفضت ولا ینفقونها فی سبیل اللہ فبشرهم بعذاب الالی and those who hold gold and silver and don't spend it for the cause of Allah فبشرهم بعذاب الالی So to them, O Messenger of Allah, give them the glad tidings of painful torment. This ayah it was, so to say, misunderstood by Hazrat Abu Zar radiallahu anhu. He declared keeping any coin of gold or silver is haram. But the general body of the Muslims and the scholars, they think that if you know if you have got some savings, you can have some gold, some ornaments of gold and silver and gold. But if you pay the zakah, it is not kans. Yakne zuna. These words are not applicable to it. But what's the basis of saying this? It can be said, yes, inferring generally from the principles and teachings of Quran and the legal structure of Islam, which is correct, I agree with them. But the more important point they have missed, this actually relates to the people of religion. Somebody is doing a business. Somebody is a doctor, physician, engineer. He is earning on account of what? profession he is dealing in something he has a shop grocery he is earning on account of that shop what are these people earning on what account what are they dealing with dealing in they deal in religion so if they have amassed wealth that is a peculiar case you can have You require, you know, livelihood. But if you store money, if you amass wealth, while there's no source of income with you, except religion, 
and this is the worst thing. This, this actually relates to the Ahbar and Rohban. This ayah is one. So this actually, this, you know, warning, stern warning relates to the Ahbar and Rohban, not to the general Muslims. This relates not to the common people, but to the people who say we are only serving deen. Well, why didn't, did you then make such a big property for you? Is going to your sons and daughters and they are fighting and quarreling. You know, throughout the history, except for the last 50 years or so, no Muslim alim or scholar had any royalty, any rights reserved of any of his books. If you are charging royalty, if you are earning on that account, well, it's okay. Till your life, you need something to, subsistence you need. But now that becomes a property to be inherited by the sons and the daughters. And they will quarrel about it. What will happen? And what is happening, everybody knows. So that's the point. You know how many books Asaf Ali Talmi he wrote? No right. Anybody can publish. Whosoever likes, publish. And thank God, this point came to my mind from the very beginning. Whatever I have written, my cassettes, audios, I don't have any royalty, no rights reserved. Nothing of this. As you know, Hazrat Masi has been reported to have said in his sermon when he was sending his disciples to go and preach the word of God. You got it free. You can wait free. I never charge anything from you. You will also not charge anything from anybody. Just remember the day, imagine the day when this gold and silver will be heated up in the fire of hell. And then with this, you know, red hot gold and red hot silver. Their foreheads and their sides and their backs will be branded. This is what you hoarded for yourselves. Now taste. Taste what you had gathered for yourself and hoarded for yourself. In the Idlat al Shuhur in the Laisna Ashra, Isna Ashara Sharan fi Kitab in Lahi, Yoma Khalaka Sabawatim al Larda Minha Arbaatun Hurum. Now, this is a general, you know, reformation because the customs in Arabia they had gone wrong. They had gone wrong. This calendar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, In the Idlat al Shuhur in the Lahi, Isna Ashara Sharan fi Kitab in Lahi. With Allah and in the law of Allah, in the book of Allah, the number of months of a year is 12. From the very day, Yawma Khalaqa Samawati Yawma Khalaqa From the very beginning day when he created the heavens and the earth. This is the calendar. I wonder at some time, how come you know, the week has seven days, everywhere. The year has 12 months everywhere. This universality, you know. So it is this, you know, calendar that has been fixed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No difference. 
نو سویلیزیشن ان نو کلچر نو بھیا ٹویلو منتھس سیون ڈیز اے ویک ٹویلو منتھس اے ایئر ان عدت الشهور عند الله اثنا عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والارض منها اربعة حرم اوت اوف ذیس ٹویلو فور آر ہولی اور سیکرڈ منتھس ایز یو نو ایز آئی ٹولڈ ان دی بگننگ ون فار حج الاصغر اور عمرہ رجب اینڈ تھری فار دی حج الاکبر اور حج دیٹ از ذو القعدہ ذو الحجہ این محرم ذالک الدین القیم فلا تظلمو فیہن انفسکم دس از دی رائٹ دین اکنالج بائی اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی دی سٹریٹ دین اینڈ ڈو ناٹ رونگ یور سیلز ریگارڈنگ دیم وہ قاتل المشرقین کاف فتن کما یو قاتل And you fight against these mushrikeen, all of them, as they are fighting with you, all of them. No discrimination now. After this proclamation, all mushrikeen are to be, to be taken as one entity. Although there were th- three categories, you know, they have been discussed beforehand in the first six ayat. But essentially, they are one. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَعَلْ مُتَّقِينَ And know it, be it known to you, that Allah is with the God-fearing, those who have regard for Allah, who are conscious of Allah every moment. إِنَّمَا النَّسِيُّ زِيَادَةٌ فِي الْكُفْرِ Now this nasi was the invention of Quraysh. Because they were the custodians of Kaaba. They thought they have the authority to change these months. This year, this month will be sacred. They completed the four numbers, they remain intact, but they could change the calendar. This is Nasi. In the Nasi was Yadatun Filkuf. This is an addition into disbelief. Yudallo Bihil Lazina Kafaru, by which these peoples who have rejected the faith, who have gone astray, they have been led astray. Yuhiluna Hu Aman. One year they declare it as halal and the other year they declare it the same month to be haram. So that they complete the number of four months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided. So they kept the law regarding the number but they were changing the months. زُيِّنَ لَهُمْ سُوءُ عَمَالِهِمْ This evil deed of theirs has been made beautiful for them. They very much like, you know, the authority. We can, we can declare it. We are the custodians of Kaaba. We can declare, no, this year, instead of Rajab, it will be, say, Shaban. It will be the month for Umrah. And this will be haram. No fighting. Nothing of the sort in that month. They thought this is, you know, our prerogative, our authority. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْدِ الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah is not going to guide such ungrateful people or those people who suppress the testimony of their souls within and reject the faith which has been presented to, you, to them by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is not going to guide them to the right path. Now what happened in the last Hajj, Hajjat al-Bada? All these discrepancies, you know, taken together, The calendar came to the original calendar on that 10th year of Hijra calendar. The real, you know, now the month of Zuqada was really the month of Zuqada. And if your, our, if your clock, you know, is going fast, one hour every day, after 24 days, the time will be absolutely okay. So this happened. But this was by the, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why in his khutbah, the sermon of the last Hajj, the Prophet said, Istadara zamanu kahayatihi yawma khalaq Allahu samawati wal lard. That all these, you know, mistakes and discrepancies taken together, but you know, this calendar has taken a full round and it has come to the same correct position. 
the position on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created on the first day when he created heavens and earth. Istadara zamanu kahayatihi yawma khalaqallahu samawati wallah. With this ayah number 37, this discourse ends. Again remember, out of these 37 ayat, 18, from the 7th to 24th, they were revealed in the 8th year of Hijri calendar, before the victory of Makkah. But the first 6 ayat, and these 13 ayat, from 25th to 37th, they were revealed in the month of Zuqada, in the ninth year of the Hijri calendar, when the Hajj caravan had already left. And then you know because the first six were most important, and they were to be proclaimed, then Hazrat Ali was sent, ta'ala an, and he made that declaration on behalf of Muhammad, or actually this became, you know, a sign and symbol of the perfection of the Eid. Al yawma akbaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raghitu lakum islam adina. The accomplishment of the al al khassa of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The special assignment that he had to fulfill himself stood accomplished, fulfilled. That is why I told you he took the testimony from the audience. Allah hal ballaghtu. And the reply was in one voice, Inna nashhadu anna ka kad ballaghta wa daita wa nasahta. And there are more words also in one tradition. Inna nashhadu anna ka daita lamanata wa ballaghta risalata wa nasahta al-ummat wa kashafta al-ummat. May be a testimony. And then he said, Fal yuballighi shahidu al-ghaiba. Now it's your duty. Duty of those who are present here to convey to those who are not present here. That was the second aspect which he had initiated already after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah by sending his letters of invitation to Islam. And you know that has culminated in the Battle of Mota and the, the journey to Tabuk, and that will be discussed in the coming ayat, inshallah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al Azim wa nafani wa yakum bil ayat wa zikr hakim.